Hi, I'm Griff Batch. Welcome back to my scrolling platformer tutorial for Scratch. This is part three, and today we are going to be looking into making our little platformer more robust for uh, platforming tasks. So let's start right away. And what we're going to do is we're going to make our level a little bit more interesting so that we can see where the current platformer um, is let down. So let's change our costumes. Let's duplicate the level. So we've now got level one, two, and we'll use this one for now. So we don't erase our original one and we'll add in some more obstacles. So what we're going to add in is a slope on one side. We're going to add in, let's use another color, a roof on this side. And I'm going to add in a wall. Let's have another color again. Let's have a purple vertical wall. I'm going to hold down shift there so I get a perfect line. Okay, so we've got a bit more of an interesting level around the guy now. Let's go back into our person and play this game. Now, when I move around up here, all is fine. If I go down here, I jump up. Ah, I can jump up straight through the wall, the floor. And if I walk up the slope, that seems to work at the moment. If I walk up to this wall, whoa, straight up to the top. Not good. So we need to fix all these things. The first thing we're going to fix is the jumping up through the ceiling. That's the most easy to fix. So let's go to our scripts. And what we need to change is the change player Y custom block. Now, the reason this is all going wrong is that the script that says if you're in a platform, you have to move up to get out of it. So if I'm jumping up from below, that's not useful because unfortunately, jumping up from below, moving up, obviously pops you out from the top of the platform. So that's no use. So we need to change this little bit of script here so that it knows which direction to push you if you touch a platform. So if you're jumping up, it pushes you down, back out. If you're coming down, it pushes you back up. So to do that, let's get an if else block. And we pop it right at the start. Hold on, before we do this, it's worth mentioning you should stop your project. The problem with editing this sort of script while you're playing the game is that if it's running with a, um, what was it called? If you're running it with the run without screen refresh ticked, which we are in one of our blocks, then if you change the script in here and it runs, you can cause a, a loop that's so fast that it causes Scratch to have a bit of a problem. So stop your scripts here and we'll do it carefully then. So what we're going to move is the position block. It's going to go underneath this if. The change Y is going to go into the if. Put that back in here. OK, so we've got an if at the start, and then we've got our position part. And we've got a change Y in there. So we need the greater than symbol. And what we're going to say in here is if the speed that we're moving us by is bigger than zero. Now, what that means is we're moving up. Speed of positive speed is moving upwards. So if we're moving up, we want to change the y by minus 1. So move him down again. Duplicate that into the second else part. And so if we're moving up, we move him down. And if we were moving down, we want to move up. So put that one to 1. OK, so we've got a change y by minus 1 and a change y by 1. Uh, let's just run that again just to see what happens. So now if I go underneath and jump, Aha! Success! He's not jumping through. But one thing that is happening, if I hold the up key, ah, that could be a useful feature in a game, but it wasn't what I wanted. And the reason that is happening is that in our little loop down here, we set um, in air to zero. It means that if we hit something, we assume we are on the ground. But we're not on the ground when we hit the, our heads. We should only be on the ground if we hit our bottoms. So we need to move that in air from there to put it into this if here. So it's only if our character is moving down and we hit something that we set in air to zero. So now if we jump, aha, there we go. Perfect, it doesn't stick anymore. And we can jump up here. Right, so that's fixed our first problem of the jumping into roofs. But now we have more problems. So let's have a look what these are. What about walking up a slope? 
seems to work still. How about walking into a wall? Nope. So walking into a wall is our next issue to fix. We need to stop him from jumping right up to the top. So in essence, what we need to do when we walk sideways, we need to check to see whether he's hit a wall and move him out. This is very similar to the script we used for falling through a platform. So let's see if we can make use of that fact. What we're going to do is look for the here we are tick custom block and we've got the if left key change x and the if right key change x so we're going to create a new custom block to use instead of this change x and we're going to call it change player x by oh, by and click the options down and add in SX into there. Click OK. OK, this is just like our change player Y. And we're going to use this now, so make sure you choose the right one, the change player X. And where we were change our X before, let's use this. So push in, pass in minus 8 again. And take that change X out. And duplicate that. And we'll change X by 8 when you move right. I stop this. Nope. See, I told you. I warned you. Press stop. <laughs> right. So this change player x by is going to be very similar to our change player y. In fact, so similar that for now, let's um, let's let's duplicate it and we'll pop it in here. But what we need to do is make sure we change all of the sx's and sy's and the y's and x's. So make sure we're changing by sx, not sy. And the comparison is SX, not SY. Get rid of these SYs. And then this bit here is change X by. We don't need the in S, so let's get rid of that. Repeat until not touching platform. If speed X is bigger than zero, change X by minus one. Otherwise, change X by one. Get rid of the in air. Reposition and get rid of the chain set speed y. So that's a bit more cut down, but that should be the first the first cut of this. So let's see if this works. Let's make it big again and play our project. So let's try walking to the wall. Aha! We do appear to be stuck there and not able to walk through it. That's great. Hit our heads. Good. Can't go through the floor. But what about slope? Aha! The thing that was working all along now doesn't work because anything that's any kind of incline at all, which is what this big wall is, stops us. So we're stopped by slopes now. So we need to get make another change to our scripts to support slopes now. So let's stop our project and have a look. So we need to modify this change player X script. <clears throat> and what we need to do is have some extra checks in here before we stop the player and move them away. So the best way to do this is to get an if block and put it right way around the entire script under position. And we're going to need this touching platforms, pop it in there. So it's only going to run this bit here if we're touching a platform when we walk sideways into one. But what we want to do is to see whether when we walk across to this slope, whether we can move ourselves up a little bit out of the slope. If we find that we can move ourselves up, then that's great. We'll let it do that. But if we walk into a big wall and we move ourselves up, it'll say, nope, we can't do that because we're not out of the wall. We have to move up all this way to get out of the wall. And we don't want that. So we're going to let ourselves move a little bit up and see whether there's space. So what we'll do is we'll have a repeat loop. That's going to be repeat eight so eight pixels we're going to try which is just a little tiny bit just enough it's the same speed that we're walking sideways which is why i chose it so it means that if we walk across eight we can move up eight so it's a nice 45 degree slope so within that repeat eight we need to change our y position to move upwards so change y by one so move up by one then we need to position like that. 
and then do a check to see whether we're in a platform. So again, another if and check to see whether we're not in a platform. Yep. And if we're not in the platform, then we're OK. We're actually out of the platform and this scripts all want to stop. Let me show you this now. If I move this whole script and I put it into the here just before the other repeat. OK, so if we're touching a platform, we loop around moving up eight times. And if at any point we're no longer in a platform, we want to stop and come out of this custom block. That can be done using this stop block. But not stop all, because that stops our whole program. We want to stop this script. So this is the effect of moving me up. And then as soon as we're out of a platform, we come out. And that's great, because that's what we wanted. We've walked into a slope, we've moved us up, and we're out. However, if at the end of this eight move ups, we're not out of the, the platform, then we've probably hit a wall. So we want to go back to doing what we did before and checking um, and pushing us out of the wall back to where we were. But before we can do that, we've realized that we've moved ourselves up by eight, one eight times. So we need to move ourselves back down eight times quickly. So we need another change just in here at the end of the loop. And it's going to be y by minus eight. Yeah. So we've repeated round eight times going up and then we move ourselves back down eight. And then if we have moved down, we then repeat the checks to push us back out of the slope. So let's see if that works. Run that. So run into a wall. All's good. And the big moment. Ah, fail. It starts to seem to work and then it doesn't. Could it be that this slope is actually slightly taller than um, 45 degrees, probably so. In that case, we might need to tweak this eight. Let's try adding this to 12 instead. And again, minus 12 here. Try again. There we go. So this slope was actually too steep, but now it works. So you need to tweak that value to find a good one that works for your game. Let's try this wall. Yep, yeah, all good. I think we have a good stable platformer now. This is looking really good. Much more like what we wanted originally. OK, so that was the main purpose of this tutorial to get to this point. But I thought what might be nice is just to add a little bit more level on just to make it a bit more exciting for you before I uh, leave it for the next tutorial. So let's do that. Go into your platforms. So we've already now got level one and uh, point one and level one, two. So let's add a third one in. So duplicate that again. So it's nice it's doing the numbering for us like this, which is great. Um, let's change this level slightly so it's interesting. Um, let's draw another line going up from this platform like this. And maybe change this line over here to what should we do? Do that. OK, so we've got three bits of level. So let's go into the scripts. Right, what we haven't done is added in here um, the setup custom block, which we already call broadcasting, but we're not uh, doing anything with. So add in a setup like that. I'll just move this tick up here out of the way. And in setup, we want to do our cloning and positioning of the level pieces. So for starters, we need some set X and set Ys. So set X and set Y to zero to begin with, which is in the middle. So this level here will appear in the middle where of the screen of the game. And also switch the costume to the first costume of the level. OK, all good. So that will run just as it did before originally with our first part of the level. Now we want another piece of the level next to it. So for this, we need to start using clones under the control. Let's see, create clone of myself. So that means we've now got two copies of this level. Um, and what we shall do now is script to move this bit of level. So we'll change X by, um, we'll say 360 for now. So we're moving it to the second one across by 360. 
and we will switch to the next costume as well. So next costume. Okay, so we've done that now. There we go. So now we've got this bit of level and we've got the next bit of level. And what if we want another one? Well, it's easy now. So we just create a duplicate of this clone, change X and the next costume and run it again. And now we have the next bit of level. So there you are, three pieces of level, one after the other, very easy, very quick. You, of course, will have been noticing that on the left we have a bit of an artifact, that as we go along, these bits on the left and right remain. You can still see them poking across. This is the bane of a scratcher's life when it comes to scrolling. So you'll see lots of projects with white or black borders around them to hide this little overlap of the previous bits of level. Um, or there's another way of doing things, which is to hide them as they go off the screen. Um, but that is not for this tutorial, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. You can design some levels, have some fun, but you have to put up with that edge or draw a little border around it so that you can't see it. Um, but next tutorial, we'll go into how I will hide it for this game and hopefully lots more. So thank you again for watching. Um, see you guys. Bye.